Okay, so at this point, the next thing that we do in um, the step here is background neutralization. So if you click on this, um, it's going to open up background neutralization, but we need to find a reference image to neutralize. So what I do is I create a preview. So in here, there's a little button up here that does a preview and it creates a preview. And then we can drag and uh, create like a preview when we do like, like a little box. So I'll scroll. What we're trying to do with the background neutralization is find the darkest point in the image that we feel is dark and we want to try to neutralize that. So you can find wherever the dark point is. For me, I feel maybe, maybe it's up here. This kind of looks like the darkest. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll into the image a little bit and then I'm going to scroll up and scroll in a little more and up. And in here, what we're going to do is because we've already cl clicked on that little preview button, we're going to block out a set of uh, the darkness. So I'm going to go right here. And what you want to do, the goal is, is to just do the background. You don't want any stars. So um, I think probably right there is probably safe. And what that does is it creates a preview. In here, uh, in the background neutralization, we'll just click on this little square box over here and then We'll uncheck include main views because we don't want to look at the main views. We don't look at the DBE and the drizzle integration. And what it's going to do is just find the preview. So if we do a drop down here and we can just choose that preview that we created and hit the OK button. And then we're just going to drag our arrow and drop it. And then it did a background uh, neutralization. Now, don't worry. I know it looks red and you're like, whoa, that's too much, but um, I'll, we don't have to worry about that. So you can just hit close out here. And if you click on the preview, up here you can click on uh, the X button and that'll just delete the preview uh, and then at this point um, we can zoom back out of our image and then what we can do is just do the auto stretch again and it'll re-auto stretch it and it doesn't look like it did much but it did do a background neutralization and it, and it cleaned up the, the background a little bit it's going to be difficult to see because you'd have to go back and forth and switch but the problem is because we did the auto stretch you're going to have to auto stretch back and forth so I'm not going to go with that the next thing that I do after uh, background neutralization is um, I have color calibration here, but I actually use photometric cali uh, calibration. Um, sometimes I've, I've run into issues where um, the photometric cal uh, color calibration doesn't work on all data that I've tried to edit. Now, not necessarily my data, but just data that I've played with or tried to learn on. Um, it doesn't always work. So you can use the color calibration. I'm not going to go through color calibration. I'll let you find a YouTube video on that. I'm just going to go through the photometric color calibration. And um, because my images uh, were shot with the ZWO ASIR in a FITS format, it automatically puts in uh, my coordinates in the image. So if I come up here and go to File, I can go to FITS header, and I, it's going to show the FITS header and what I shot with. So it's going to show that I shot with my ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro. It's going to show that this is a light frame, what my Bayer matrix uh, pattern is. Uh, it's going to show my mod, my mount. I, my mount is listed as an EQ mod uh, mount inside the ZWO, and it's going to show my RA and my DAC. So it automatically knew where I was shooting, and it put all this information in the FITS header. So um, if you have a right, uh, if if you're using FITS headers and it's capturing all that data properly and creating the proper FITS, you can do uh, acquire from image, and then it'll automatically set up a right ascension and declination, like mine did. Uh, if it does not, you can always search for the coordinates and type in the coordinates of what we are, uh, what we shot. Um, you would need to, you could type in like Rosette Nebula and do a search and it would find it. But again, because I have a proper FITS header, I don't have to worry about that and I can acquire from image. So at this point, what this is going to do is it's going to connect um, to uh, the uh, server in France and it's going to, based on my coordinates, it's going to find exactly what I shot and then it's going to pull down a color calibration for the image and basically apply it to the image. So um, it's, again, I'm not, I'm not going deep into this. It's just very basic. I've already got all the settings set um, and they're tied to each icon. So each icon, I, I set specific settings and then it keeps it saved on those icons. So you don't have to mess with this every single time. So at this point, what I do is I just drag it and I drop it onto the image. And then at this point, it's gonna run through and it's gonna connect to the image in the server. Um, and it's going to basically download some information about the color image and then it's going to apply the color. So uh, at this point, I'll go ahead and uh, stop this video and then we'll continue on with the next.